All right, everyone, welcome to the second section in Unit 5. Uh, so this is a continuation of the video series for the flipped classroom. So Unit 5.2, we're going to build on what we did in the last lesson, and we're going to talk about properties of a function. Now, functions are, are special cases of relations. But before we go into that, we'll do a, a brief review. So in 5.1, we talked about uh, relations. Uh, relations being associations between uh, two different sets of elements or two different sets of data. So as a review, on the left here we have uh, one set of data. Uh, in this particular example we have uh, communities, northern communities. And on the right we have the second set of data. And in this particular set uh, we're talking about territories. Now, remember an object in a set. So, whereas all these communities are a set, an individual object is called an element of the set. So this is an element of the first set, would be Hay River, and none of it would be an element in the second set. Uh, this particular way of representing relations is called an arrow diagram, and with an arrow diagram we always like to draw the association, and in this case the association that we're making between uh, the first set and the second set is that elements in the first set are located in the elements of the second set. Uh, or to put it plainly, uh, the communities in this set are located in the territories in this set. Okay. So let's build on that. So we can think of a function as a special kind of relation. Uh, some functions can be represented by an input-output machine, like the one pictured above, and you might have seen this last year. So uh, this is kind of a clever way to illustrate what a function is doing. So uh, one number is going in here, it's being transformed, and then it's being spit out here as the transformed number. So here we have a table, uh, here we have a relation, and the association in this case uh, is the operations that we're applying uh, to the sets. So, uh, what is the rule for the input-output machine pictured above? Uh, we can say the rule is, uh, for whatever number we're putting in, we need to multiply it by 2, and then we need to add 3. Uh, so the rule is, uh, whatever the number is, we're multiplying it by 2, and then adding 3. And then it asks us, well, which numbers would complete the table for this machine? Uh, well, let's look at this. So our inputs, uh, what we call this set of data, the, the set of data on the left, uh, is 1 for the input. And then when we multiply that by 2 and add 3, we get 5. Uh, same here. We multiply 2 by 2. That's 4. We add 3 and we get 7. Um, this one here, we'll just skip and we'll go to 4 right away first. So I have 4 as an input. Well, what am I going to get? In the output, well, I multiply 4 by 2, which is 8, and then add 3, and that gives me 11. Now, here we're kind of working backwards. If I have 9 as an output, uh, what would have been the input? Well, uh, whatever I had, I multiplied it by 2 and, and added 3. So let's actually do the opposite. So 9 minus 3 would be 6, divided by 2 would be 3. And that kind of makes sense, because if you look at the inputs, uh, we're going in order 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and this would probably be 5. And we can check those by saying 3 times 2 is 6, plus 3 is 9, uh, just as 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. Okay. So let's talk a bit more about, uh, about functions. And particularly, we're going we're gonna to define the sets that we were talking about yesterday. So uh, here's three examples. Uh, we have different sets in these examples. Here we have uh, a set of data here. In this case, it's fruits like we saw yesterday. And here we have a set of, of colors. And up to this point, we've been calling this the first set. And we've been calling this the second set. When actually, they do have very specific names. The set of first elements of a relation is called the domain. So the first set of elements uh, 
From now on, I'm going to refer to that as the domain. So in this arrow diagram, it's this set here. In this table, that would be the breed of dogs. That set is called the domain. Uh, and in this graph here, in this bar graph, we'd be talking about the townships here, or the towns. So if the first set of elements has a name, it makes sense that the second set has a name as well. And the set of related second elements of a relation is called the range. So we have the domain here and the range over here. So the first set is the domain and the second set is the range. So from here on out in this video, this is how I'm going to refer to uh, sets of data within our relations or within our functions. Uh, and a function is a special type of relation where each element in the domain, so the domain would be here, where each element of the domain is associated with exactly one element in the range and only one element in the range. So let's talk about that a little bit further. So here we have uh, two arrow diagrams and if you look at these we're actually representing similar ideas here but in different ways. If you look at this arrow diagram, uh, the first set is composed of numbers. In this case, we're making a relation between vehicles and how many wheels they have. So, uh, in this case, we're saying the association is, is the number of wheels on? So here we have uh, one wheel on a unicycle, two wheels on a bicycle and a motorcycle, three wheels on a trike, and four wheels on a car. And here we're representing similar ideas, but in quite a different way. So in this case, instead of starting with the wheels and making an association from wheels to vehicles, here we're starting with the vehicles in the first set and making the association with the number of wheels. So uh, in this case, the domain is the vehicle. In this case, the domain is the number of wheels. So here we're saying that the vehicle has this number of wheels here. Well, let's go back to our definition of a function. And this is really the key concept here in this, in this lesson, is that uh, a function is a special type of relation where each element in the domain, so this being the domain here and here, where each element in the domain is associated with exactly one and only one element in the range. So, uh, these two arrow diagrams relate vehicles with number of wheels in two different ways. One of these relations is a function, while the other is not. Identify the function. So, if you'd like, pause the video for just a minute or two, think about it, and see if you can identify which of these two arrow diagrams is the function. Okay, so, uh, let's take a look at this one first. So these are the elements in the domain on this left side here. So remember the first set is always the domain, whereas the second set is the range. And actually let's name them here to make it a little clear. So we have the domain and then we have the range uh, and same here, I'll put D and I'll put R. So remember a function is a relation where each element in the domain is associated with only one element in the range. Well, if we look at one for one wheel, one wheel is only associated with one element in the range, with unicycle. But when we look at two wheeled vehicles, two wheels is the number of wheels on both a bicycle and a motorcycle. So this element in the domain is associated with two elements in the range. And because our definition of a function is that each element of the domain is only associated with one element in the range, we can say that this form of representation of this relation is not a function. So let's double check this second one over here. So uh, let's look at the elements in the domain. So bicycles associated with uh, two wheels because it has this number of wheels, which is two. Uh, the motorcycle has two wheels. The tricycle has three wheels. Unicycle one, car four. So in this case, each element in the domain is associated with only one element in the range. So in this case, it is a function. 
And if you look at the range here, and we see that two is associated with more than one element in the domain, that's okay. Uh, it's okay that an element in the range is associated with more than one element of domain. We just don't want to have it going the other way. We can't have an element in the domain have more than one association with an element in the range. Okay, so just make sure you understand that if you don't, I suggest maybe rewind the video and watch this little segment again because this really is the key concept of, of this video of this of this unit one point or five point two. Okay, so at this point, pause the video. Uh, try this on your own. Here I've shown two relations. Uh, they're both written differently. One's written with a narrow diagram and one's written as a set of ordered pairs. Uh, and take the time and figure out whether each of these is a relation or a function. Or sorry, whether each one of these is a relation uh, is a function or not, because a function is a type of relation. Uh, and then justify your answer. Uh, identify the domain and range of each relation that is a function. So for, for the ones that are functions, I want you to name what set is the domain and what set is the range. So pause the video and give that a try, and then we'll continue. We come back. Okay, so uh, here we're saying that a relation that associates number with a prime factor of the number. And the association isn't really that critical for being able to solve this problem, for being able to identify the function. If you look here, we have a set of ordered pairs. Now remember, the first number in an ordered pair is the first set. So that would be the domain. Uh, so here we have 4, 2, uh, 6, 2, and 6, 3. So we can see here that 6 is associated with more than one element in the range. Because 6 would be part of the domain. Uh, if we were to write this as a table, uh, 6 would be on the left, and the 2 and the 3 would be on the right, so it would be in the range. Uh, and then 8 and the 2. But right away, because we see this, we know that right off the bat that this is not a function. On here on the right, this one is a function uh, because every element of the domain is associated with only one element in the range. And to identify the domain and range in this one, this one here is the domain. That's the first set, and the second set is the range. Okay, uh, so here's an example of another relation. Uh, in the workplace, a person's gross pay, P dollars, that's what we're going to call gross pay, often depends on the number of hours worked. And that's going to be represented by H. And that kind of makes sense. How much you take home is completely dependent on how many hours you worked uh, in the workplace. So this, if we look at this, I can tell you right now that this is a function because uh, each element in the domain is only associated with one element in the range. Um, so, we say P, as in dollars, is the blank variable. Now, we said that gross pay, which is P, is dependent on how many hours you've worked. So, we call that the dependent variable. So, since the number of hours worked, which is represented by H, does not depend on the gross pay, we say that it is the independent variable because it's independent of how much money you've made. So we can, if we think about it, gross pay is dependent on hours worked and that's the how we name or, or identify those two sets. Okay, uh, so here we have on this side, this is the independent variable, because hour works, hours work does not depend on how much you made. Uh, and on this side here, we have the dependent variable. Uh, the independent variable is usually always, always written in the first set, uh, which is also identified as the domain. So independent variable represents the domain, whereas the dependent variable represents the range. And sometimes you'll be asked to write out the domain and the range. 
that's that's found in tables. Uh, and the next question that you're going to have is going to ask you that. And when you do that, all you're going to do is you're actually going to write them in brackets. So if we look at the domain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I just write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then close it off with brackets. For the range, the same thing. Open bracket. Uh, 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60, and then close bracket. Okay, 